welcome back to another tutorial. We're going to start this one with the finger picking pattern because there is so much to this song. So it is, I'm telling you now, it's a long song. <laughs> Grab your cup of tea now, okay? You've been warned. Um, so we're going to start with our finger picking pattern. So we're going to start with Pima fingers on this hand over here. So the left hand's coming off for a bit and we're just going to go uh, thumb on your E, your A, your D, index on your G, middle finger on your B, and then ring on your E, okay? You might find that this one is jumping a little bit depending on what chord you are on, and that's normal, that's fine, okay? Just make sure your hand isn't up here because if it is up here, you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna catch strings. Your hand should be over there by the sound hole where it will resonate much nicer than up here. All right then, so let's crack on. So, like I said, no left hand, resist the urge to put a chord on, just take that hand away, and we're looking at this finger picking pattern. So you can see already the rhythm is nice and easy, it's just coffee, 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 coffee. And it goes around and round and round. And we're just gonna slowly walk ourselves through that. So we can see we've got an A string, G string, D string, G string, B, G string, D, B. So let's do that again. And this time with fingers, so we're gonna go thumb, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index. And we'll do that a bit slower because I know that's still quite fast when you're new to this. So, thumb, index, thumb, index, middle, index, thumb, index. Let's do it again. See if you can go round. Do it again. And again. And again. So you want to keep doing this until it's as seamless as this, so there's no gaps after each bar, because you don't want it to sound like this. Because this is all good, we like this, but we don't like that gap, because that will throw you out of time. So keep practicing this until it becomes second nature for your right hand, just keep it going. And if you need to slow this down, I'll put the little graphic up now, remember this is how you do it. Click the cog, settings, playback speed 75. And be kind to yourself, guys. If you find that maybe it, let's say it doesn't like to move the thumb, so maybe you like to go A string, A string again, it's okay. You're still in the rhythm, and it still works. And you're going to find this sounds so much better when there's a chord down anyway. So please do be kind to yourself, but it is important that you get that finger picking pattern in your hand first before you attempt to follow this video. <laughs> Otherwise it's going to be like, ah, what is going on? Right, so once this is in your hand, what I want you to try and do is practice going between G and C. So I think that's good practice anyway to do it in this format, because maybe you're used to playing G this way. For this song, you're going to find it easier if it's the other way around, because you've got a... A starry starry and then you're straight into a pattern that way round so G is if you're playing G7 but we don't need the seventh we just need a little finger down on third fret on the E string over there okay so you're gonna do that and then you're gonna go into a C chord can you see how that's logical yeah so from there and then those two drop down that one goes down on the B string this one comes off if that's a little tricky you can leave that one down that's fine and then you can see in the finger picking pattern at this time, we're not using the E string anyway. So we're not using this one down here, so it's fine to leave this one down. It's gonna basically act as um, an anchor so that we can get between these two chords. So without further ado, let's see if we can do the finger picking pattern. And you wanna, let's do it at least twice through. So like this. So that's once, twice. Because that gives you time to think, where am I going next? Oh yes, C. And you can leave that little finger down, it's fine. All right, so twice through on each chord. I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. To C.
want you to think about this while you're doing it. Try and get to A minor. Slow down, A minor. And then see if you can get back to C. Back to A minor, think about it. Here we go. Obviously do that for as long as you need to in order for this to become completely second nature because you kind of have two stages of your finger picking pattern learning. Whew, try and say that fast. <laughs> You've got the bit where you're training this guy up so that he can do it without thinking, without you having to look at him, you know, you're trusting him. We've talked about that before, right? Remember when I said like, uh, don't look at your hand, trust it, but maybe look at your knee so it's, you're just looking literally there and then maybe look at the floor as you're doing it. So you're taking it out of your peripheral vision and slowly trusting the right hand. So you do that, and then once you've done that, you try and get between two chords to start with. If you can get between two chords, you see if you can whack in another one. Once you can do about three or four, you're good to go and you're ready to tackle this one, okay? Moving on for those who are ready. The main bulk of this song is that finger picking pattern. And the stuff I'm gonna show you is just like the sprinklings on top, okay? You could do the whole thing like that. The only thing you can't do like that is the intro of the starry, starry. You can't go starry, starry night. Well, you can, but it's it's not that interesting. <laughs> so we'll look at the intro first, and then I'll show you the, the sprinkly bit, shall we say. So, bar one, nice and easy. You go one, two, D string. We're gonna hammer on starry, G string, starry. And try and use your middle finger because that trains you up to be in that G shape. Do you remember we just did it? That's our G today, not this one because that's going to turn us around the wrong way. So we're going to use our middle finger. It's going to jump down to the D string. Starry, starry. D string, G string. So the starry, starry, I insist that you learn, okay? <laughs> Wherever you get that little motif, you get it on starry, starry. Shadows on the uh, starry, starry again. And then there's a final starry starry as well, towards the end. So it's right at the beginning of the verses, that's where that comes in. All right, so after that, this is what I'm talking about where you have the option. You could just have that G down and you could just do our finger picking pan. Note that my thumb has now moved on to the E string because the lowest bass note on the G is that G over there on third fret on my E string. So I wouldn't go from this string because it sounds a bit weird. It's okay, but it's not great. That sounds better. So, like I said, you could go night, paint your palette blue and grey, and carry on in that form formation. And you would from the A minor anyway, but what I hear going on in the record is a little bit different. So, let's look at the tab. <laughs> Bar two first. Yeah, let's not do two and three. Might be a little bit overwhelming. So we've got some hammer-ons and pull-offs in this but they're not massive flicks, so I think you can do it. So we're gonna pluck. And then that one will be a pull off. So you pluck your three and your zero together first. That's your middle finger and your thumb. Index, thumb, middle, hammer it on. Index, thumb, middle. And then that one will be a pull off. Let's do that a little bit slower. And remember, you can slow it down. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Let's do that again. Why not? <laughs> and we'll go into the next bar afterwards so that you really get an idea of what's going on. One, two, three, four. Pull off. Okay, so I don't know if this will help you, but I'll tell you anyway, in my head, that last little bit where it says, paint your palette, I kind of think of it as it's going upstairs. It's just half the finger picking pattern, basically. I don't know why, I know it looks bumpy. It's a bumpy set of stairs, <laughs> but that helps me with my imagery so I can think, oh yeah, it's the pull-offs first. One more. And then I'm going up the stairs. And then after that, like I said, it reverts back into the finger-picking pattern. 
for a little bit. But let's just slow that down so that you can do it. So that's bar three. Remember, it's starting. I'll start on the one on the previous bar because it is a pull off. This guy's hovering, by the way. He's not down. He's just hovering. So it is literally. I wonder if I can move him out the way so you can see. <laughs> it is just that kind of movement. Can you see? I'm just lifting. Admittedly, this is a good loud guitar, so this might be quiet on other guitars. But I don't want you to feel like you've got to really drag it because it might knock you out of time, it might take you out of that position, you might take your hand off entirely, I don't know. It's kind of like, you've got to find what works for you. Just I find personally less is more with this song. Just a subtle little pull off and don't worry about it. So, bar three, going from the one, counting you in. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Repeated my B, didn't I? You see what I mean, though, about how if you make a mistake, it's not horribly obvious. It's obvious to us because we're reading it, but to your audience it isn't, because you still have the chord down and you're still doing the rhythm correctly. You're not suddenly going into a bunch of semiquavers or sixteenth notes. <laughs> so it's okay. So don't beat yourself up too much if you hit the wrong string. Let's do that again. Let's see if I can do it correctly. <laughs> so from that one in the previous bar. One, two, three, four. Super, and then we'll see if we can do the whole of the first line, okay? One, two, three, four. Super. And then, like I said, go back around a couple times until you're happy with it. And then from there, it's just the finger picking pattern and ordinary chords A minor, blue. eyes and know the darkness in my soul. So let's look at how many times you play this finger picking pattern. So when you're on the A minor you're going to play it twice, when you're on the C you're going to play it once, when you're on the D you're going to play it once, and when you're on the G you're only going to play half of it. So two, one, one, half. <laughs> and it's going to go like this. So blue and grey, two, look out on Summer's day, just once D7, revise and know the darkness in my soul. And the reason that one's half is so that you can come over and go shadows on the and then carry on with the song. So this is your starry, starry motif. The bit that we all know, basically. That comes back in at the end of that bar to complete the bar. Okay, so with the D7, we're jumping the whole thing down one. So we were up here. Now that finger picking pattern is going to jump down one. This is now our bass note, our D. And we're going to go middle, thumb, middle, ring, middle, thumb, middle. Okay, and again. And I do this because I like the sound better than if I were to do it up there. You can hear it kind of works, but it also sounds a little bit strange and I just think it sounds better if I can jump it down. So to start with, you probably will just keep it where it was when you're playing C. And that's okay, that's acceptable, don't worry about that. When you feel comfortable and like you've got this song and you're like, right, I wanna get that D7 a bit better, jump it down, start on the D. And do it that way. And then you're into your G afterwards. And like I said, it's just half the pattern. Maybe do it like that or very much up to you. So after that, you've got again, like we said, shadows on the hills, and then it repeats just like uh, bar two and bar three. It's exactly the same. So let's do that together, counting you in. One, two, shadows on the hills. Sketch the trees and the death. the breeze and the winter chills and then pause so you can see that's the same okay and then with this d7 things get slightly different 
You can ignore this tab. You could just do what we just did with the D7. You could have your... And then you could go to a G. And then I would probably still advise you to do the C, D, C. And then carry on from there. So always, 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 with every adaption I do, with every arrangement, please do it your way. <laughs> if you don't get on with something, that's fine. It's absolutely fine. Do what works for you. But I'm going to talk you through this tab I've written here. So coming at that D7, here we go. Let's make sure you can see everything. We're going to go D string, middle, index, ring. I'm laughing at myself because for some reason my brain finds that hard today. <laughs> Just like that. We're going up the stairs again. And then a quick hammer on. He does this really fast on the record. It's more like a 16th beat or a semi-quaver. Like that, very quick. But again, I don't mind if you do it like this, a little bit slower. So we're hammering on, we're coming from D7. So this is happening with the ring finger on, um, on both counts actually, two ring fingers. So you're hitting the E string, hammering it down. And then from there, taking that three and sliding it up to five, keep the pressure down. So again, let's move this one further forward so you can see. E string, go to the third fret, pressure down, and keep sliding. Well, don't keep sliding or you keep going up the neck. <laughs> but you'll see what I mean. If you take the pressure off, you won't get it ringing. If you keep it down, you hear the five. And then from there, we're just going two threes, nice and easy. So this is like you're coming back down the stairs towards your face. So let's see if we can put those two little bits together before we do the slidey slidey bit. So from D7, counting you in, one, two, three, four. Good, and we'll do that one more time because it's tricky and it's good to get the practice in. Remember, you don't have to go as slow as me with those bits. You could have a that's fine. Your choice. I'm doing it nice and slow to help people out that don't want to do it fast. Okay, so here we go. From D7. One, two, three, four. Nice. And then from there, you can see you've got, well, it looks a bit of a mess. I, I agree. I know what you mean. <laughs> but you've got the chord of C sliding up to a D chord and then back down, okay? So it looks worse than it is. It's literally the one and the three. You don't have to worry about the two on the C chord and you're just gonna pluck. And you can see that G is ringing throughout. So you're gonna go C chord, slide, slide back, pull off. <laughs> Try not to hit the E string. <laughs> That's better, there we go. This takes a little bit of work, and I must admit, I'm not like most guitarists. Most people I've encountered, um, like, say they're performing or they get nervous or something, they have very slippy fingers. I'm the opposite. i got dry fingers, <laughs> so I find this really hard. So maybe if you've got some hand cream. No, don't do that. You'll, you'll, you'll put a bunch of mush all over your strings, but <laughs> you'll get it. Practice makes perfect, and just don't put too much pressure down. If you squeeze too hard, like this... That's really hard to move it. So it's a fine balance of um, enough pressure, but not so much that you can't move it or that you're hurting yourself. So once again, we're plucking the A string, the G string and the B string. Once, slide, and then pull off. And you can put this in the song as much as you want. A nice place to put it um, is on page two when you've got um, this world was never meant for one as beautiful as you. I like that. And let's carry on into the next bar so you can get an idea of how this line is going to end. We've got another little key motif here coming up. So we're walking up the stairs first. And now I understand. So every time it's before the chorus, now I understand. You're going to play that little if you can, if you're happy to. Sounds really nice if you can. And it's all on the B string and ending on the E. And you can hammer it on, which I quite like. So you can go B string and then onto the E. I wouldn't slide to five, but you can if you want to. If, if you're the kind of guitarist that wants to go up the neck and is really happy doing that, by all means. 
just keep the pressure down. The reason I wouldn't do it is because I'm coming to an A minor and that will move me over here. So unless I'm doing A minor up there, it's gonna fluff me up for the next bit. Because I wanna do that next rather than... But to each their own, you might wanna play A minor up there. I don't know, it's up to you guys. <laughs> So let's see if we can put this whole line together because I'm pretty sure if you can do the rest of it, you can definitely do that last bar. So we're going from the D7. We've just had our winter chills. Winter chills, just to give you context. So get your D7 ready, I'll count you in. One, two, three, four. chance counting you in one two three four slide now I am done. good all right relax for a second take a deep breath because <sighs> you won't realize how tense your body's been while you've been learning this Let's see if we can go from the beginning as far as here. Okay, so get that G ready. Take a sip if you've got a cup of tea, by the way. Take a sip or it'll get cold. <laughs> All right, you ready? So we're thinking about that starry, starry. That's how we're gonna start. Remember, I'm gonna count you in, but you come in on beat three. Here we go. One, two, starry, starry night. Take another sip, you've earned it. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's talk about this chorus. Okay, so on to the next section. We're just using the finger picking pattern and moving it around to suit the chord. Or mostly moving the thumb around, if I'm honest. So we start with um, the A minor. Stand. D7, we're dropping down just like we did before. What you tried to say to me. How you suffered for your sanity. If you're not used to A minor 7, it is just A minor and you lift off your ring finger. That's all it is. It sounds more than it is, doesn't it? It sounds a little bit imposing, but it's not. It's just that. It's quite a pretty chord. Uh, sanity. D7. We're sort of in the same position. How you tried to set them and when you get here we want a nice dramatic E minor so it's quite soft if I use my thumb but it sounds a lot more dramatic if I use the back of my index finger and get the nail involved and that's kind of what I want because I'm conjuring to be honest the sadness of losing this artist you know if you don't know the song is about Vincent van Gogh or Vincent van Gogh however you want to say it and he had a bit of a tragic life so I'm trying to conjure that through my music so <laughs> I want it to sound dramatic and kind of sad they would not listen, they did not know how. So we start picking again on the A7. This is a full bar of A7 as well. And I say that because the next two chords um, encompass one bar. So you've got half a finger picking pattern on the A minor 7, and then half on the D7, and then a full on the G, but then that's tapped, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So from A7, you'll go, they did not know how. And did you find like I did, it sounded a bit meh to do it that way? 
It's okay, don't get me wrong, it's alright. But like I said before when we were talking about the D7 and getting that extra sparkle in it, if you get to this point you're like, mm, I could do that better, then the thing you're missing is the C over here. So you pluck the A string and the B string, index, thumb, index, G string, D string, G string, and it just gives you a bit more of the melody in that they did uh, not know how. You get that sliding down sensation. Perhaps they listen now. It's a lovely little effect if you can get it. Pretty, very pretty. Okay. <sighs> and breathe. Let's do that again all the way through without me stopping you every five seconds. So we'll go from and now I understand so that you get the context. So remember, I will count you in one, two, and then off you go, now I under. All right, so thinking about the A minor we're coming to, remembering the dramatic pause on free. Here we go, we can do this. One, two, and now I understand what you tried to say. How you suffered for your sanity How you tried to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they listen now Okay, let's do that again. Here we go. One, two, and now I am suffered for your sanity how you tried to set them free they would not listen they did not know how perhaps they listen now oh. all right let's look at the last little bit of tab for you to learn today okay last little bit i promise Promise, it's the last bit of time. So we've got our G this way round. Use your index to get to the F sharp, because that allows you to get a lot of lovely clearance. Can you see that nice arch I've got going there? If I use um, my middle finger, I'm suddenly too close and it, it doesn't work. So I, I need to use my index. I don't know about you guys. You might prefer to use different fingers entirely. You might find doing it that way. Suits you. And that's absolutely fine if it does. It, it honestly is. I really don't mind. So please use whatever works for you. But I'm going to use this method. So here I go. And the rhythm is simple. It's just coffee, 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 tea, coffee, 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 coffee. So almost the, exactly the same. It's just that you have a crotchet or a quarter note at the end of that first bar of this section. So let's give it a go. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident with you guys now that you can probably sight read it. So let's give it a go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and let's go around again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and And you probably recognize that bit. That's just starry, starry night. And then from there, you bring in the first idea again. If you want to. Remember, I did say you could just pick it straight. And that will still work. So, oh, pat on the back to you, my friends. Well done. I think it's probably worth us doing the chorus chunk. <laughs> and seeing how that one sits. And then we'll just talk about chords and then I'll go through the whole thing with you, okay? So let's talk, let's not talk. <laughs> let's go through the chorus chunk. So we're thinking about the A minor on stand, but we're gonna go from and now I understand. So from there onto that last bit of tab. All right, here we go. Counting you in. 
one, two. Now I understand what you tried to say to me, how you suffered for your sanity. They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they listen now Starry, starry And then so on and so forth Okay, so we've gone through all of the tab now and I'm hoping you've got a good idea of how you would implement that in the rest of the song and if not, remember you can always do default setting, finger picking pattern, and you're good to go. It will still work. So the only section left to talk about is this kind of second chorus towards the end of the song. So let's talk about that second chorus. So it starts the same. I know it's an A minor 7, but it, it could just as easily be an A minor, that's absolutely fine. And here we go, I'll just walk and talk you through it. So you're going to go, for they could not love you. Still your love was true and Then I want you to strum the next two chords And when no hope was left inside on that So C minor 6 From here put your index up onto the D string And flatten, bar right the way across And then you want your middle finger on the G string 2nd fret Little finger over here on 3rd fret on your E string And that's your C minor 6 Very pretty little chord so let's see if we can get to it again. So from A minor 7. And when no hope was left inside on that starry, starry night. And sometimes this happens, guys, and you have to just go, Ah, oh, well, I only slipped one. <laughs> and that's okay. You're only human. Let's do it again. And when no hope was left inside on that starry, starry night. It's a pretty little chord, isn't it? I like this one. Very nice. And then you're on to G for half... Um, half a bar of that finger picking pattern and then onto an F again for half a bar so they complete each other all right I'd use this F as opposed to that F because I want it to sound like it's going down so it's gonna go G sorry F E7 so you get that boom, boom, boom. in other words something very terrible has happened and we're reflecting on that and I, I want that to happen in, in what I'm playing basically I want it to mirror the words so, half a bar of G. You took your life as lovers often do. And a full bar of E7. If you're not familiar with E7, this is E. We just take off the ring finger. You're seeing a pattern now, aren't you? Let's do that again. So, G. You took your life as lovers often do. But I, and then these are full bars, could have told you, Vincent. This world was never meant for one as beautiful as you. And either a full bar and then a half bar, so you'd go you, then a half bar, starry, starry, and carry on from there. Or, remember we've got our little that we could bring back in if we want to. And then finally, last thing I promise, last thing. Finally, to finish off, you're going to have um, a starry, starry, and then a G. So it's our starry, starry motif, ending with a beautiful G. Really enjoy it. Alright, and you can even do maybe a full bar. Perhaps they never will. And then do it. That feels a little too sudden for me, so maybe I'd go a full bar and then a half bar. So we'll half bar. Star, it's probably what I would do. It seems to vary depending on which version you listen to by Don um, and whether or not it's live. Alrighty then, let's give it a go. And full disclosure, guys, I struggle to sing in this key. It's a little bit low for me, but I'm going to give it a go for you guys because I'm a trooper and I know that the capo tends to throw you. So, <laughs> so here we go. One, two, starry, starry night. Ain't you 
pallid blue and grey Look out on a summer's day With eyes that know the darkness in my soul Shadows on the hills Sketch the trees and the daffodils Catch the breeze and the winter chills In colours on What you tried to say to me How you suffered for your sanity How you tried to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they listen now Starry, starry Flowers that brightly blaze, swirling clouds and violet haze, reflecting Vincent's eyes of china blue, colors changing hue, morning fields of amber grain, weathered faces lined in pain, are soothed beneath loving hand now I understand what you tried to say to me how you suffered for your sanity how you tried to set them free they would not listen they did not know how perhaps they listen now they could not love you But still your love was true And when no hope was left inside On that starry, starry night You took your life as lovers often do But I could have told you, Vincent This world was never meant for Portraits hung in empty halls Frameless heads on nameless walls With eyes that watch the world and can't forget Like the strangers that you've met The ragged men in ragged clothes The silver thorn, the bloody rose Like crushed and you tried to say to me how you suffered for your sanity how you tried to set them free they would not listen they're not listening still perhaps they never <laughs> made myself laugh because I still sang Starry Starry Night at the end but I made it work <laughs> I think I went to default and teaching you guys don't forget that motif it was quite funny um, I hope you've enjoyed this one a lot of work went into it so I felt like it was worth sharing with all of you guys so I really really hope you get a lot out of it because there's so much involved in it and like I said you can make it as complicated or as simple as you like the finger picking pattern will work throughout the whole song apart from on the strums make sure you do still strum those and that'll sound beautiful. So well done for getting this far, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.